college football season is upon us, and the only thing manlier than watching college football is taking care of your balls. Manscaped.com is the only men's brand dedicated to below-the-waist grooming and hygiene. Fellas, I present to you the Perfect Package 2.0. With the Perfect Package 2.0, you will get the Crop Reviver, a spray-on body toner designed for highly sensitive and high friction areas of the body. you also get the Crop Reserver, ball deodorant that will help get rid of chafing. That's right, fellas, no more chafing. you also receive my personal favorite, the Lawnmower 2.0. This electric trimmer is cordless, 100% waterproof, and features a strong 6,000 RPM motor that can handle coarse and curly hair without tugs and pulls, and has a rust-resistant replaceable ceramic blade module to prevent nicks and snags. Why should you get the Perfect Package 2.0, you ask? Subscribers get a new replacement blade refill for their trimmer delivered to their door every three months, and you get a 30-day money-back guarantee. So, if you nip your sack, send it back. And you know what? Because I'm feeling generous, I'll even throw in some more stuff. If you order the Perfect Package 2.0, I'll make sure they include the new Plow 2.0 Safety Razor as part of their first replenishment pack. And I'll also make sure they include the Shed Travel Bag. Sounds pretty good, right? Well, that's because it is. You could say it's the perfect package for your package. Head on over to manscaped.com today and get 20% off plus free shipping with promo code BH20. Third down to go. Pressure coming. Top of the wall has to scramble around. He's going to run on that bad ankle. Lost the football. And LSU's got it. Play fake to Edward Zelaer. Burrow going for all of it. Caught. Touchdown, Jamar Chase. LSU digs and certain for Alabama. And Rosenberg's punt goes back to the 23. Wow. I don't know how Waddle got away from that whiplash. And now he's coming the other way. Jalen Waddle across midfield. He's got a convoy. Waddle, he's gone. Touchdown! I think he's thinking about his neck. <laughs> the way it was twisted on that one play. Here's an opening. Terrace Marshall is gone. Touchdown, LSU. He was wide open. He's not in a sack, but he had pressure. To a deep on the sideline, Devontae Smith, who catches everything. Touchdown, Alabama. In the backfield with Burrow with Edward Zelaer, the tailback. Right out to the left. Burrow throws corner. What a catch by Moss. Was he in? That looked like his daddy. Holy cow. Again, pylon cam. There's the toe down, the retouch. I tell you, that's pretty acrobatic no it matter was, what the no outcome. No matter what. Burrow with Edward Zelaer. Edward Zelaer, airborne touchdown. Holy cow. If that doesn't remind you of Darren Sproles, I don't know what does. Tonga Baloa throws down the middle, intercepted. Patrick Queen coming the other way. LSU's got it right back and another chance to score before halftime. Burrow sets up, fires to the end zone. Edwards, Elair, touchdown. Darren Sproles. He's going to be a great NFL football player. He's a nightmare mismatch. Devontae Smith in motion. Time to the low. Going to go to the corner in the end zone. It's Najee Harris. Touchdown. Forty-six. Time to the low. Loads. Goes deep. Far sideline. Devontae Smith. Got it. Yep, they bring in an extra lineman. Second and goal, Matthew Harris. Touchdown, Alabama. And now they're thinking touchdown. Edward Zelo with a spin, and he'll have one. Touchdown, LSU. Tugging it off. Pumps watch, goes to the corner. Got it this time. Touchdown, Alabama. Edward Zeller. They will score. Touchdown. Head coach, and we'll get into that in a second. 
He walked to it talking to Loa, going deep on his first throw to Smith. Devante Smith, he's gone! Touchdown, Alabama! Eighty-five yards. The right and the top of the screen. Takes a pretty good hop, but it's handled by Justin Jefferson. Nice catch, right? For Joe Burrow, especially on that last drive. Edward Zilair. Dragging Alabama tacklers with him. First down. That's the game. They can take a knee now. They had to go through him. He told his team, as we said earlier, I told them all week, we're the better team. Today, they were. But what was this one like to coach? You know what? It's a great game to be in, a great rivalry. I am so happy for the state of Louisiana and all the LSU fans and our football team and our coaching staff. They worked very hard for this victory. It's a much-deserved victory for our football team and our great state of Louisiana and our great university in LSU. Joe Burrow has changed the way this team runs its offense. What does this do for his legacy as an LSU quarterback? Hey, you know, he's one of the best we've had here. But we still got four games left. And we're going down the road. We're going to try to win them every every game. And we're going to bring a championship back to Louisiana. Clyde Edwards E. Lair carried that Alabama group just now for the first down. How did that embody the toughness today? You know, Clyde is 6'4, 270. <laughs> and uh, he has a great mindset about himself. He has the heart of a champion. I am so proud of Clyde. Where can this team go from here, Coach? We'll see. We've got to go beat Ole Miss next week. We'll take it one game at a time. Congratulations. Go Tigers. Clyde Edwards Lair is right here. I'll grab him. Coach just said you're 6'4", 270. Is that how big your heart is in a game like today? Uh, I feel like my heart can't be measured. Uh, you know, growing yeah! up. <laughs> I love that guy. No, you can hang here too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come on. I mean, I feel like I feel like my heart can't be measured. Uh, you know, always a lot of doubt as far as us as a team, us as a state, and, you know, me personally, myself, I've always been talked down on height, everything else, so. You know, being able to, to help my boys out, get a team from my from my get a win for my team and my, and my state, man, it's it's something unbelievable. Baton Rouge kid, congratulations! Thank you so much, Joe. I'll talk with you. Is this why you come and play in the SEC? This is why. This is why I decided to transfer. This is why I decided to come down here and play with this guy and, and all those guys over there. You know, these are, these are the games you live for and you work so hard for. You hit a lot of speed bumps along the way, not just at LSU. When you envisioned your life and your football career turning out this way, is this what you dreamed of? You know, I thought I thought I would be on this stage. I didn't think I would be in this jersey, though. You know, it's been it's been a bumpy road. It's been a long one, but I'm, I couldn't be in a better place. They call a draw play for you at the end. There, you get the first down. You stand up. Was that your Heisman moment? <laughs> I don't know about all that. No, we're not we're not done yet. It's game game nine. We got we got three more regular seasons than the SEC championship. So. You know, this was never our goal. You know, we, we got bigger goals than this. How good does this feel you too? Oh, this is amazing. This is amazing. I can't wait to get back home. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Field had a 58-yard rush against Buffalo earlier this year. Throwing deep. Single coverage. Jump ball. And it is intercepted by Antoine Winfield. They're using it to great impact lately. The blitz is picked up. There's an open man. It's Rashad Bateman. And he is good. Touchdown, Minnesota, 66 yards. Got it in between two defenders. Here's Journey Brown. He breaks tackles. He has lots of running room. He has a touchdown. Penn State with a quick response, 45 yards. Literally not penetrating. Short throw, little bubble. Chris Ottman Bell inside the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Minnesota. Ricky Slade in and running back. They blitzer ran him over, but the ball got off, and it's intercepted again by Antoine Winfield. And he brings it back to the 39-yard line. Ten history among those who threw a minimum of 15 passes in a game. Trying to thread it in, and he does. Tyler Johnson, touchdown, Minnesota. 
And it's a touchdown. Great fake by Clifford and Nick Bowers has his first catch of the game. Green lowers his head again. Touchdown, Minnesota. Out in goal. Clifford lobs it up for Hamler, and it's batted away. Chris Williamson had the coverage, and Minnesota takes over on down. I don't think they got it off. Didn't look like they did. Journey Brown walks in. But Sean Clifford is hurt at the end of the play. It was an awkward handoff between he and Journey Brown. Clifford forced to retreat on target. Jahan Dawson inside the 20 and down at the 10-yard line. On second and nine, down the middle and chopped down Journey Brown by Thomas Barber, who's not getting up quickly. There is a flag down. Pass interference. Offense number 11. Four-man rush. Clifford has room. Fires too long for Daniel George at Ohio State. Three-man rush. Clifford again has time. Throws! And it is intercepted in the end zone by Jordan Howden! Tanner Morgan, 18 of 20. 339 yards and three touchdowns. They rode the boat and it's for real here, baby. Yeah, make no room on the boat. There are a lot fewer doubters around the college football landscape when it comes to the Minnesota Gophers than we had at the start of the day. They play for the Governor's Victory Bell, which dates back to 1993 when Penn State came into the Big Ten and their first game in conference was against Minnesota. It's over. One of the biggest wins in school history for the University of Minnesota. They go to 9-0. They beat undefeated previously Penn State 31-26. team in the country. Woo, woo, woo. You know, what does that mean to you? He said, well, we're 1-0 oh in the Penn State season. Yeah. Yeah. But hey, this was special. This was special because we talked all week about what it takes to make a diamond. And we talked about that, that carbon and that pressure. 2,700 degrees, 4,000 men standing on your right foot. That amount of pressure in a long period of time. And then somebody's got to go find it. And then amazing things happen when you have all that carbon of all of our stories that we wrote down last night in our team meeting and all the things we learned from pressure and all the things we talked about back in January. And then you pulled out this thing, boys. You pulled out. Yeah. Yeah. Because here in the one and Penn State season, this is your reward. Mm. But to get that, this was in the mud, the muck, right? The heat, the pressure. It was under all that rock, and you had to find a way to make it happen, and you did. And I couldn't be more proud of you. You guys are all diamonds. You truly are. Hold on to that for me. It's real. <laughs> it's going to be the, that, that right. I'm not <laughs> I will say this, guys. I couldn't be more proud of the football team. There's a lot of people who have doubted you, and I want to start with that because that doesn't matter. On the way to success, on the way to being elite, on the way to being a champion, the farther you get down the road and the closer you to become to becoming that, the more people will hate you, doubt you, and criticize you. That is the journey of success. And if you're not willing to walk down that path, you'll never have success. You'll never have what you just had on that field. You'll never have a chance to do what you have a chance to do. Because now all you've done is made our brand bigger, become a bigger target. 
But all you've done to our four walls and our world of own culture is shrink it. Mm. Yeah. So now we went from the family room. Now we gotta head into the kitchen. Because the family room's too big now. It's too big. Remember, we're building this house, it's too big. Now we gotta work ourselves into a smaller room, mm -hmm. into the kitchen. Guys, I've never met a more gutsy team, more high character team, a more, cu more culturally connected team in my entire life. What you've done is astonishing. And I told you one day you're gonna be able to look back on it. We're gonna celebrate it tonight. We'll talk about it tomorrow, right? And then we'll put our leather vest back on and we'll be zero and zero again. That's what I love about you. And when you stop doing that, the ride will stop. I don't want the ride to stop. Oh, no. Does anybody want the ride to stop? No. You want this ride to stop? No. Just keep rowing that boat. First pass play, Hurts lets it go right before he's hit. In coverage, Lamb goes up and gets it. Touchdown, Oklahoma. That makes it look pretty easy. Here's the fastest receiver Iowa State's got, and Tariq Milton who can show off that speed. Down the sideline, touchdown. Empty set for him here. Bringing pressure with Mike Rose, who couldn't get there in time. It's Lamb hitting the accelerator, cutting it against the green, hurtling into the clear. There goes C.D. Lamb. He gets a block. He gets inside the five. He is, I believe, in. Can you believe it? He's in. Touchdown. 14. Brooks has room off the left side. Gets a couple of blocks from Lamb. Springing him free. Touchdown. Brooks with an assist from C.D. Lamb. Stands tall. Delivers to a wide open man. It's a touchdown. Hurts looking to throw on third and seven. He's retreating with Spears chasing him, and he throws an interception. Lawrence White picks it off. And with 2.43 left to go, Iowa State's got it in Oklahoma territory. Would you believe this? Yes. Purdy scrambles. He'll tuck it, makes a move. He's going to get a first down. Brock Purdy making moves in the open field for 16. into the near Revised. side of the field. On third and goal, Purdy lofting, end zone, Kohler, touchdown! They've come all the way back. With 24 seconds, it's the Norman native, Charlie Kohler, with a touchdown. Gets rid of it. That ball is picked off. Parnell Motley and Oklahoma will survive. <laughs>